Representative Boyle, I know one issue that you've been doing a lot of work on recently is domestic and dating violence. Why is this issue so important to you? Well, uh, unfortunately, Faith, um, the issue of domestic violence is increasingly a crisis in, in our society. Uh, I've called it a quiet crisis, and I'm trying to make it not so quiet. Uh, the numbers as they relate to domestic violence are astounding. It, right here in Pennsylvania, out of every three days, a woman dies in Pennsylvania as a result of domestic violence. It is a very serious issue. Speaking to a couple friends of mine who are the Philadelphia Police Department or captains, they informed me that in Northeast Philadelphia specifically, where fortunately there, there are very few murders a year, but of those murders that have taken place in the last 12 months, the majority have been the result of domestic violence. Well, and these are supposed to be people who love you, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, it, uh, it, uh, it's a very complicated issue. And I can tell you the, the one call that cops hate getting uh, is a domestic violence call because it's so different in nature from every other kind of crime, your burglary, um, your different kind of assault, something that, that's of more of a predictable, logical sort of nature. These crimes of passion, the domestic violence um, area is enormously difficult. So. Uh, myself and my office, we've tried to do a few things to raise awareness on this issue and, and also to combat it. The first is the number of, and I'll use the female pronoun because although there are some men who are victims of domestic violence, in the overwhelming majority of cases, we are talking about uh, girls and women. Um, I've uh, partnered up with a colleague of mine, Representative Scott Conklin. He has a great bill that would uh, introduce in our high school curriculum awareness on teen dating violence. Um, believe it or not, it, those sorts of unhealthy relationships can start in the teen years. And studies show a number of um, high school girls who are in those sorts of relationships actually aren't aware that the sort of abusive relationship in which they've entered is, is actually abusive. Um, for them, that is, they with a, a number of, of girls who've been in this situation think that's the norm. And he is a bill that is named after a young girl who was a constituent of his who actually died as a result of her abusive boyfriend. Uh, so it's, it's a real effort. I was very proud to stand with him, as well as the, the family of um, that victim at a press conference about a month ago during Domestic Violence Awareness Week when we talked about that bill. Um, and that's something that we should make law here in, in Pennsylvania. It's something I've been, been working on. So that's the first that, as it relates to... And his bill would require uh, teen dating violence education in public correct. schools. Correct, yes. That that, and it, it's not as if this would be an onerous requirement. Just a few hours a year of adding that to the curriculum can make a real difference. And studies have showed that, that uh, those who have received this sort of education who are aware um, are far less likely to enter into or remain in an abusive relationship. Uh, so that's the first thing that we can do on the teen front of domestic violence. The, the second is, and this is uh, actually two bills that I've authored, uh, and it's adopted um, off of the states of Maryland and New Jersey. That is, they provide at the state level um, a few hours of training a year for our police officers, specifically uh, on domestic violence. We don't require that in Pennsylvania. We're the only state in the northeastern part of the United States that does not require it. I believe we should require it, and we should also provide our, our local police with the resources um, to help instruct officers on the best way to deal with domestic violence cases, the best way to gather data, um, because again and again you'll see a woman who's in a domestic violence situation. She wants to break the cycle but doesn't know how, doesn't know how to get out of it. In Maryland, when, they, when police encounter a domestic violence situation, they have a completely different sheet that they use to gather information. That information can then be given to a domestic violence advocacy group, such as Women Against Abuse, who then can reach out to the woman. Or um, the, the victim of domestic violence is given information on where she can seek help. Those sorts of smart strategies have worked elsewhere, but we don't have them here in Pennsylvania, and we really need to start doing that. And I have two bills... Uh, that would do exactly that, one at the state level and the other for municipalities. Okay. And your bill would require a minimum of four hours right. of training every year That's for correct. the police officers so they know how to properly handle domestic abuse phone That's calls. That's exactly correct. And, you know, not only uh, would my bill help 
uh, those women who find themselves, or, or anyone, as I said, uh, who finds themselves in a, a domestic violence situation. It also helps the police. As I've mentioned, I have a number of friends of mine uh, who are Philadelphia police officers, and they absolutely hate when they get that call that it's a domestic violence situation. It is completely different in its character and its nature to other sorts of um, uh, situations that law enforcement officials find themselves responding to. Uh, so I really think that, that my legislation is a, a win-win in, in that regard. Okay. And uh, real quickly, back to uh, Representative Conklin's bill, who you co-sponsored. Um, would, would this education, uh, teen dating violence education, only be restricted to public schools, or can private schools have it as well? Yeah, they, they, the, uh, it's important that, I mean, we have a number of kids who are uh, taught outside the public school system. It's important that we make this curriculum available to everybody. It's not as if this uh, only happens in our public schools or in our parochial schools. I'm a product of the parochial school system. A number of my constituents attend charter schools, uh, an increasing number are now homeschooled. It's important that we don't allow those um, distinctions uh, to, to impact a, you know, an area such as important as this. There's also a foundation, and you can find this information uh, on my website. There is a foundation uh, out there that will provide this curriculum for free, uh, so that way there's no added cost uh, to the school districts. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.